Hey guys, welcome back to Off the Great Wall. Today's video is probably gonna make you go like. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what are those? Because that's probably that's basically our reaction when we were researching this. Yeah, it's definitely not for the faint of heart or the weak stomach or the non-experimental. <laughs> <laughs> Even for the experimental, like... Because when you talk about delicacies, they what do you think first? Well, they're usually just kind of weird and not that attainable. Escargot. That's true. Caviar. Something that is delicacy to you might not be for other people. Like, to for them, the it's just like... the originated from. Yeah. Yeah. So we compiled a list of 10 things. 10 delicacies in Asia that we thought were the most interesting. Um, definitely not the most delicious. So let's just jump into it. <laughs> All right, so the first one is, I think, pretty well known. It's the balut. It's also referred to as the duck or chicken embryo, which is boiled and eaten. Um, and actually, it originated from the Philippines and in Tagalog, which is the language of Philippines, it means wrapped because it's still oh. in the shell. So you boil it and it was often found on the streets of Philippine. It's like a street food. Definitely not what I would think of as a street <laughs> snack. <laughs> I think even here, it's sold in like, in little cans. Is it? I think so. Why people eat it, they say it's really high in calcium. A lot of pregnant women also eat it because of the nutritional values. And it's also said to be an aphrodisiac. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I may pass on that. It's not even prepared in any way. You can still see it's in an egg. It's got like feathers. Yeah, that's the thing. It looks like like almost complete. You complete me. <laughs> but other than that, it was also believed in like folklore to be a medicine, a type of medicine, mm. and also a <laughs> cure for hangovers. You gotta calm down here. Have some bollocks. <laughs> So would you try this? Um, no. <laughs> no tangs. Hard, no. <laughs> All right, the next one, just as scary as snake wine. And this is basically uh, consumed in some East Asian countries like China, um, Korea. This whole snake, it's like rice wine infused with a whole snake. And it is believed that the combination of the alcohol, snake essence, and snake venom is good to promote vitality and health. What the heck is snake <laughs> essence? I don't know. I don't Actually, really I've know. seen this. When I was in Guangzhou, they had like the glass kind of jar. canister jar things. Yeah. And then there's just like snakes lined up, coiled inside. Yeah. In like a red kind of or uh. yellowy red <laughs> kind of liquid. And snakes are actually widely believed to have you know, plethora of medicinal qualities from curing farsightedness to curing wow. hair loss. Ah! Wow. Yeah, so I don't know. I need to get me a pet snake. <laughs> and then eat it. <laughs> but a woman in China who was bitten by a snake who jumped out of the jar after being in there for like three months. <laughs> it's I like a really jack know. in the box. Surprise! <laughs> Okay, so snake wine. Would you try it? You're thinking about it? Actually, I don't think that would be that bad because the snake is just sitting in- Actually, no! <laughs> There's snake essence and, and venom in there, right? Yeah. But the venom is somewhat neutralized by the alcohol and stuff, so... Yeah. It's nah, fine. Nah. I'm saying that it's fine, but I'm never gonna try it. <laughs> Following on from that, the next one is snake's blood. So in Vietnam, there's actually a lot of snake restaurants which prepare every part of the snake for you to enjoy. Yeah. Um, and actually, this is pretty popular with tourists as well. So you never refuse an invitation. So what you do, there's three steps. You cut off the head of the snake, and then you hold the snake upside down so that all the blood drains down into a bowl or a cup. Do you and also like squeeze it out yeah, of the body? Yeah, so it just drips. And then when all the blood is kind of drained out, 
Um, you mix it with either a rice wine or a grain alcohol, so like vodka. And then, apart from that, because you don't want to waste any part of the snake, they also take out the live beating heart and put it in a bowl. And if you're special enough at these cobra or snake restaurants, they'll actually offer the guests to eat the snake heart whole and live while it's still pulsating. I can't! <laughs> And they say you can feel it like pulse in your mouth. So one of the main reasons they choose to drink snake's blood is because snake's blood actually has a lot of fatty acids, which they believe is good for the heart. And also it enhances virility. I feel like a lot of these, <laughs> these <laughs> delicacies are like aphrodisiacs, but yeah. But one of the major risks is that all reptiles, their blood carries salmonella. Now would you drink it? <laughs> Is that even a question? No, never. <laughs> if you're on your deathbed and you're on your last breath, yeah. and this is said to, no. you know, like, like this can save your life. Would you like, do it? Just kill me now. <laughs> Enough about snakes. The next one is bondegi, which is actually steam or boiled silkworm. It's actually seasoned with soy sauce and sugar, mm. and uh, some of them eat this during, you know, drinking after work. So it's kind of like a happy hour. Is um, it crispy? No, because it's boiled. It's somewhat crunchy. People who have eaten it say that they taste a little like nutty. So back in the days, silkworms are actually um, their source of protein during mm. the Korean Wars. So mm -hmm. would you eat it? Mm -hmm. Maybe yes. I mean, compared to the stuff we've already mentioned. I'll say yes, if, if okay. we have to, you know. Next one is... Oink, oink. A little pig. <laughs> Alright, so the next one is pig's blood. And I'm sure a lot of you have come across this in like Vietnamese uh, noodle soups. Um, but apart from Vietnam, it's also a delicacy in the Cantonese region. Southern China. I always see it in Vietnamese noodle soups and that's commonly just how it's served. Like a really dark purple red color and the texture is kind of silky, like silky tofu, but also a little bit chewy and firm. Um, and they're prepared in two ways. You can steam it or you can boil it. The health benefits of this is that it's high in calcium, it's high in iron and vitamin C. But then from that, the risk is that you have too much and you get iron poisoning. This one, would you try? Actually, I might have eaten this in the past. Yeah, like my aunties and everything are Vietnamese, so when they make noodle soups and stuff at home, she used to make pig's blood as well, or like buy it and then put it in the noodles. I'd be like, ew, no thanks, but I may have had it. <laughs> okay, the next one, I actually just found out about it recently. This is ant egg soup. And at first I was like, ant? soup with egg, but it's actually no. This is the eggs of ants. And they're particularly the red ants, the nasty ones. <laughs> this dish originates from Laos and the locals there, they really know how to harvest these nests. Um, and they're usually in trees, right? So they have like a bamboo branch and, and they just... kind of prod it. Once it falls down, you have a bucket of water oh. on the ground to just catch it. Obviously the ants will crawl all over, but then they will start floating. So that's how you separate the ants and the eggs. After a while, it becomes soggy, it becomes puffy, so it looks like rice. And you mix it with other ingredients like fish and tamarind and like garlic. And so you probably can't really see the ant eggs. So out of the dishes that we've talked about so far, I'm probably gonna try this. All right, the next one is shark fin. And I think a lot of like Chinese people would have known this. Like it's commonly served in weddings and also like business banquets because it's seen as a really elite kind of ingredient. But actually the shark fin is all cartilage and there's no nutritional value in the cartilage. And if they serve this at a banquet, it means that the host is really wealthy. Yeah. Or like either that or you're a really special guest. So the shark fin itself has no flavor or anything. The soup or the broth is usually the thing that like has the flavor and then the shark fin is just purely for texture. So you might have heard that the shark fin increases your appetite, improves your kidneys, bones and lungs, but actually there's no medical proof that it does any of these things. Fish sperm. Shirako. Ew, it's buttery and custard-like. <laughs> and it's literally translated into white child. So as you can guess, it's white in color. And it can be served either raw or slightly grilled. 
or even pan grilled? fried and deep fried. Yes. Wait. So what's the form of it? It's just. It looks like brain actually. Oh, not, so it's not like milk. It doesn't make it any better. No, no. It's oh. like sashimi, and it's just served with nothing else. It's just that. And shirako is actually believed to be good for your skin because it, it's you know high in protein and low in cholesterol. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> All right, the next one is well known in Chinese regions. It's the bird's nest soup. So the saliva is actually from a bird called a swallow or a swiftlet, and so they collect these like uh, saliva nest things, and then they boil it, and then it becomes this like kind of gelatinous texture, and then they typically put that in a soup or a sweet soup, which is called tongso. You can find them in like jars and containers because it was used and believed to be good for the skin for you know women who want a nice fair complexion to reduce wrinkles and lines on their face to like brighten the texture of the skin and so you can find them in like bottles with it um, and they've infused it with rock sugar. It's ready made. Yeah. Oh wow, I didn't know that. In like a jar. I mean, if you go to Chinese herbal stores, <laughs> <laughs> herbal stores. <laughs> The way they sell it is like, the thing is dried out, so you, oh, yeah. have, to you have to boil it. it. Yeah. yeah. So the saliva is actually one of the most expensive foods that you can get in the world, along with white truffle, Kobe beef, um, the certain type of oyster, and like caviar. It's that level of food. <laughs> and they say the best way to eat this, like whether it's in a soup or whatever, is on an empty stomach before you actually have your main meal, so that all the nutrients can kind of absorb into your body. Oh, okay. So would we have this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, our last delicacy is turtle soup. It's actually soup made from the flesh of the turtle, you know, the meat, the skin, the innards. Sweet. Totally. Aww. This is popular in Singapore and some East Asian countries. In Singapore, they said that they use green turtles, and in East Asian countries, they use soft shell turtles. Well, I don't have the heart to eat turtle. Yeah, so don't get this mixed up with the turtle jelly. <laughs> the guailing go. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> yeah, this is actually like a soup using the meat of the actual turtle. Mm -hmm. Guailing go is just the, the, the shell. shell. They boil the shell to make the broth. And it is believed that turtle actually has a lot of benefits, like it has this cooling effect, so it'll mm. cool the body, increase longevity because turtle live for a long time, <laughs> <laughs> reduce heart palpitations. Uh -huh. I mean, it has a lot of benefits, but still, I don't know. And turtle meat, you know, the color is dark and the texture is just a little bit slimy, like tin mushrooms. All right, so I hope we have um, stimulated your appetite. <laughs> I think we started with the worst one and then progressively got a little better. A teeny bit better. A little better. <laughs> Which one of these have you tried? Like, we've tried some of these things that we've mentioned, but not the scary ones like snakes and snake blood. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this delicious video, and I guess we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye! And this is really... Uh, I'm losing my train of thought. And this is popular. <laughs> and this is... And this...